Hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, I got an independent book that was part of a Kickstarter that I supported. Um, I believe that my first time hearing about this was from uh, my friend Isaac Bell, who does uh, Metal Shade and Shrine. I've got videos on all his work on my channel. And um, one of his videos on his YouTube channel, he was talking about some different Kickstarters by other creators that were out there that he uh, was kind of liking and digging. So I go looking. I mean, it, it means a lot. I mean, it, it legitimately helps if you're a fan of a thing and you've got kind of an audience and a voice, shout out the shit that you like to other people. So they may go like it and, and find it. And then maybe you're lucky enough to, um, you know, you can support uh, independent creator that maybe would have never had your support before if you didn't know that it existed. So this is the back cover because they had multiple covers uh, that you could choose. And um, I kind of, it's it's been a minute, you know, Kickstarters that you support them and it takes a minute often for them to kind of get done. I mean, don't get me wrong, it got to me in a timely fashion, but you don't get it within a week or two. It's been a couple months because they have to finish the book, print it, distribute it, all that shit. But you get the opportunity to buy multiple covers. And um, uh, their book has some, shall we call it, uh, uh, adult content. And I chose a cover that had like no titles and just the, uh, had a cover that you could choose from multiple different images. And I chose the one that I thought was the most striking and awesome. But uh, I don't think I can. I, I'll show it ever so briefly and then we'll just flip into the book and get to see it. But um so Bad Bug is like the studio, the production house that makes it. But the cover, um, I'll let you see it for half a second. Oh, my Lord. we got to cover this up. Right, fellas? Um, great image. Like, really striking colors and figure work. Just very, um, you know, can't let the YouTube algorithm get mad at me or anything like that. So anyway, we're going to get into this. Book's titled No More Gods. So it just, the Kickstarter looked interesting enough. And I'm like, fuck it, you know, I'll support it. I can't remember what I paid. And then there is a limit. I mean, this is like kind of your standard size, regular kind of comic. I don't know what the page count is, but I don't know, 20 pages or something like that. And there is a limit that I will pay for this shit. Um, I'm going to guess it was in the 20 to $25 range, which is a lot for a single issue. But, you know, you get some little extras and tchotchkes and stuff like that. And, you know what, I was kind of happy. That, that is the limit. I'm not going to pay 30 or 40 or 50 bucks for a single, 50 bucks for a single issue like this. You know, that's just me. I do have a dollar amount limit for a single little book. Um, so I picked it up and got it just a couple days ago. Um, written by Bill Stoddard, art by Ev Cantata, colors by Luis Zavala. Um, you can see the rest of them there. Uh, no names that I'm aware of, but that's fine. There's lots of people out there making their own books. Um, one thing that was interesting to me is that I got the digital rewards. That's always part of the the um, the Kickstarter rewards, the campaign, is like you get the you know, like a digital download. And you get that way before you actually get the physical book. And so I, I got the digital download a couple weeks ago, honestly. And I looked into it and I started flipping through it and I didn't like what I saw. I just, I, I just, I didn't, I'm like, uh, this is what I got. Like, it's kind of, it was like, it was fine. But I'm like, uh, not very excited now. But then I get the physical book and I flip through it and I like it a lot better. So to me, this is just some kind of, it's just me, I guess. I, I, I do not like reading comics on my phone or a computer or an iPad or any kind of digital device. Fuck that shit. I do not like it. Um, and I will go out of my way to avoid it. If that is the, you know, if they only offer it that way, I'm, well, I don't, I'm not interested. I just don't want to read it digitally. I love to hold a physical book in my hand. I want the physical media. I do not want a digital download. But it just came as part of it, so I got it. But it's just interesting to me because I looked through the, all the pages and I just kind of flipped through them. I didn't read the story. I intentionally didn't read the story because, one, I was like, oh, fuck it, I'm just bored already. But I wanted to save the reading experience for the physical book. But once I got the physical book, I'm like, oh, I like this a little better. So I don't know what it is, some intangible kind of thing where seeing it on my, my phone, this little tiny thing like this big, or I could get the big full book like this, way more interesting. It was just really kind of a revelation to me how I could be like disappointed in a thing and then kind of like 
all kind of okay with it now that I've seen the actual physical book. So I don't know if anyone else has those struggles. That's certainly how I feel. So as far as the story, I um, it doesn't say, there's a lot that it doesn't say in these things. And I actually, I mean, I can't be a hypocrite. I can't be uh, pissy about that because I talk often about how some comics have layers upon layers of text, just wall to wall text, speaking a thousand words, saying nothing. Sometimes just let the visuals tell the story. And in that sense, that's kind of what we got here. So that's okay. I don't know if this is supposed to be like fantasy earth, just ancient earth. I, I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter. It's in, kind of irrelevant. Just read the story, right? It starts out with like a great shot, like as an artist, um, getting this aerial view, looking down on these buildings in different perspectives and all kind of detailed the way that they, it looks like a believable environment. Really good. You got some figures lined up here, um, crouched down and tied up, and then a single guy standing there and then a bunch of like regular people surrounding them. And I don't know why this guy's got glowing eyes as far as in the story, like we don't know, but he's like, these dogs have betrayed you. They value their lives more than yours, more than the lives of your women and your children. Instead of defending you from the invading jury, they ran, they spat in your face. They spat in my face, the face of your God. So, okay, we're led to understand like these people were soldiers of this town and some invading force was coming and these guys all took off running away instead of standing their ground to fight. And because they ran and were cowardly, they're going to be executed. Okay, and this guy's saying that he is his like the face of your God, him, he is the God. The book is called No More God, so maybe that's why he's got glowing eyes, magical weapon. Okay. Then he just proceeds to chop some heads off. Now I've done a flip through of this book. I kind of read it before filming. And um, there is some storytelling elements that I think are a little rough. It's not quite clear when this happened or how this happened. Things just kind of show up under there. Um, not trying to be dismissive of the artist, Ev Cantata. I know how hard storytelling can be. I like to fancy myself a comic book artist myself on some level. And I'm always trying to draw my own pages. Um, you know, if you follow my channel, I'm, you know, I'm drawing my own stuff right here. Like this is stuff that I've been doing. So I draw stuff. I draw comics and I know how hard storytelling can be. So, but I'm just trying to look at this objectively. Um, Chops a couple heads off and he's coming up to the last figure here that's tied up. And um, he says, make your peace, woman. And this, and I guess as a woman, says, oh, feeble-minded, pathetic Halgrid. And he's like, you insolent. She says, god of cacophonous bullshit, I'm really going to enjoy killing you. So he's supposed to be a god, right? But this woman's like, I'm going to kill you. Punches him in the face. I feel like the it, it could be a little more clear. I mean, it looks like a punch in the face and then a kick, but I feel like we should see her figure a little bit more clear in one of these panels here. She jumps in the air and it looks like she just got her hands like end up in a double axe hammer kind of punch. Like, what is it? Captain Kirk used to do back in Star Trek. Comes down and swipes at him. I don't know if she just pounds him in the nuts or something, but then he jumps up, gets his weapon and so she jumps away and then just suddenly there's a sword appearing and then someone says, soul seer. And then she says, come to me. And she is without clothing suddenly. Like, what? Is this like Clark Kent turning into Superman, but we have to catch the shot of her being without clothes on. And then suddenly she's in her like scantily clad warrior babe attire with the tiniest of thong underwears and shit. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love hot babes. It's just, oh, okay, sure. All right. We got to see her naked, full frontal. He's like, you dare challenge me? And then they clash weapons. She's got some kind of sword that's got like a dragon's face on, like an eye and teeth. And then it's completely unclear. They clash their weapons. And then suddenly the guy's got like some kind of tongue thing wrapped around his head. Like, Whoa, what 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 was that so then then it's severed i i guess he swiped at it with his own axe to chop it i guess 
And then this is his axe weapon, and then he's shooting, and either she's shooting back or just deflecting his beam. Or, no, there it is. Okay, I get it. He shoots, and then it deflects off a shield that she created, and it rockets into the sky. Um, kind of bad choice with the lettering, this coom. It's too light of a lettering on too light of a background. It's kind of hard to read. I mean, you can, but it's not super clear. But anyway, deflected the laser, the lightning or whatever into the sky. They charge at each other. And then it's such an extreme close-up. I guess it makes sense because in the very next panel you get to see. But the sword that the woman has with the dragon eye and teeth chomps down on the handle of the guy's axe and shocks him or something. And then she kicks him in the nuts. He falls down. He's lying on the ground. So then she... I guess sticks her sword in the ground, comes up to him with her fists balled up. And then I guess, I mean, it's supposed to be she's punching him in the face repeatedly with blood flowing everywhere. It's, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It wasn't extremely clear. Like I wasn't lost for too long. Like what, what's going on? Oh, I guess she's beating the shit out of him. Okay. And I guess he's dead. Or not yet, but he's getting there. But she's beat him down. So she's a badass. And she's got this eye dragon mouth sword thing. Then she says, how does it feel knowing they're watching this? They could have intervened at any time, but they chose not to. So she gets her sword and holds it above his chest and like sinks it into him. She says, they're letting you die. The mighty god of thunder, expendable, just like the rest of the pawns. You and your Valgir brethren move across the board as you see fit. She says, I bet they thought you could kill me, but then they just wanted to see if you could. Now they're hoping it's only you that I'm after, that if they'll do nothing, I'll kill you and be done with it. The truth is, you're the weakest, the easiest to eat first. Now that your power is mine, I'll be moving on to the next and the next. So she's stuffing the sword down into him, and I guess it's supposed to be showing that his energy is pouring out of it because she says that she, they're eating him and his power is now hers. So I guess she's taking that power upon herself. And then we cut to a scene that's like a bunch of space gods. I mean, it looks like a kind of classic-ish Greek gods, maybe Zeus and Triton and something like that. And some kind of planetary, you know, image in the background. They're watching this happened down on the planet is how I interpret this. It doesn't say, but she says, until there are no more gods left to kill. Hence the title of the book, No More Gods. Okay, so this feels like a movie, like the cold opening to a movie. Boom, you hear that, you see this part, and then we're going to kick kick to like opening credits and dramatic music or something. That's just me interpreting it that way. So, okay, action beginning. Now we cut to a scene where she's just lying around in a puddle of goo, water, and then there's just a guy there. It just cuts you. Boom. She's just there. I feel like there should have been like a landscape shot in the distance showing the landscape and then close up on the puddle of water and then her. But it just jumps to she's just here. And then there's just a guy in the water. And of course, she is without clothing. So, you know, this is the kind of comic we're doing. And that, I, I, I don't mind. You know me. If you follow my channel, you see my artwork. You know, I like drawing the ladies. Um... But um, somebody coming after her and she's like, is that, you know, Leo Frick? Is that you? And then a bunch of hands, I guess, come climbing out of the water to get her. But then the all these bodies are just lying there as she keeps going. A bunch of nude figures again. The guy's coming after her and he stabs her in the guts. And then just out of the blue comes some redheaded horned demon lady and stabs him in the skull. And now it's two ladies in a state of undress and they start making out. And our heroic alert girl's got like a tear in her eye. I was like going, what the fuck is going on? What is, what? And then, oh, she wakes up. It was a nightmare, which the character said over here. It's only another nightmare, love, come here. So then she's in the water. She's asleep. She's got a tear in her eye. She goes after her sword, gets dressed. And then she talks to the sword. She's like, all right. So where to? And then the, the sword and the creepy eye, like it points and says north. And she's like, north it is. So now she talks to her sword, which is cool, I guess. 
depends on how that could be portrayed. Um, it could be kind of silly or it could be awesome. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But she's like, or it's like, we're here. And she's like, fuck, I hate caves. The sword says tough shit. She's like, so what are we hunting? He says, Necrolord Aridin needs his, need his fires, his army. She says, oh, it smells like burning corpses. He's, the sword says, probably is. The sword says, flames will kill you, enslave your soul. Do not let them touch you. And she says, wasn't planning on it. So she's got like a little burst of flame in her hand to light her way. That's kind of interesting idea. Just however she does it, if she's magic or something. I like the backgrounds in this scene, like good rocky faces and then foggy kind of spaces in between. These, like it could be a bottomless pit there. You know, pretty awesome. And I like the design of the girl too with like the punk mohawk thing going on, kind of Mad Maxi. Then you got some bad guy surrounded in flame. He's like, you seek the flames of undeath. You wish to take them from me. They are frightened of you and your and the weapon you carry. They do not wish to be taken. They want me to burn you both and cast your souls into oblivion. She says, they'll get used to it. So then I guess bad guy, his hand, he shoots an energy blast at her. She deflects it. I guess deflects it back at him. He said, you shall not have them. And they continue fighting, exchanging fire. She picks up something or just has something and throws it. Um, I guess, and again, another thing that wasn't super clear is I guess these flame flames around the bad guy here form creatures that then become fully realized demon monsters that breathe fire at her. So then she throws whatever she had at them and burns them. Like, All right. More demon creatures come, so she starts swinging her sword around, chop, chop, chop. But then there's even more of them, so she's being overwhelmed. She's running. Um, pretty good shot of her face right there. And I love this drawing right here. Her face, um, i got to bring that up close. Great face, the skull, the placement of the ear, eyes, nose, mouth, and the figure, the arms. All really good. That's a solid as hell drawing. Um, so she goes on to list all these gods that she's killed. She says, six beings of great power, six that I have hunted and killed and whose power I have made my own. You, Necrolord Aridin, will be the seventh. So she takes her sword and holds it up and points it at him. And so he shoots a big flaming blast. So this is a pretty good page all around, I got to say. But then again, another like, what, what the fuck happened? Then I guess this is her, but now she's covered in some kind of like plating something, I guess, from the sword. It doesn't show it. It's just suddenly it, it just is. So then she starts chopping some of the demon creatures in half. Um, now he's got a giant hammer. Just because why not, I guess. They slam together. Boom. Great explosion of energy. And then the guy's just on the ground cooking like some barbecue. And then her armor thing is off. And then the dragon sword thing, like a tongue comes out and like wraps around the thing. And then he just burps. And then she pukes. I'm like, what the fuck? What? Okay. Then it says, I can hear them, hundreds, thousands of souls waiting for my command. And the sword says, Aridin's legion, now yours. So the girl says, I'm ready to kill the queen herself. And the sword says, no. I got to shout it out. I think the coloring is pretty good on this stuff. Um, pretty good colors. And then the sword says to her, much much more to eat. And then we see the, I don't know, the Greek gods and the guy who was just defeated, I guess, is coming to see them. And um, they're saying how this is the guy who, this is this is the person who killed Halgrid, the guy at the beginning of the book. And they're like, that sword, it's not possible. I'm like, well, unfortunately it is. We watched it eat Halgrid. So the sword eats them, even though it doesn't show it either time as far as eating them. It's kind of unclear what happens. But... Um, Whoever these gods are, they're making plans. They That weapon's not supposed to be there. It's not supposed to be possible. And um, so they're going to have to... Now They're setting up the conflict to come. All of these creatures. And they're going to have to take her out. So it's a close-up of one of them. Eyes flashing. We will descend upon it with all our fury. To be continued. So... Not a lot in there. Very cinematically drawn. And the story's told very cinematically. Um, big images. Not a lot of crowded little panels. It's a trade-off. More panels. More story. 
less panels, bigger visual interest, but less story in one single issue. And the problem with I have with these kind of things is that this was a Kickstarter. You probably, this is, I don't know, it doesn't list how many pages. Let's say it's a 20 page comic. I don't know. You won't get another one for another year, maybe. Maybe they're hard at work on it. But to continue the story, now I get it. Like we're all people just making our own books on our own time in between jobs or that we actually work and families and wives and husbands and kids and dogs and pets and everything. You know what I mean? We all have things that we have to do. We can't just sit down and make these comics. So they take a long time to make. I get it. But I don't know that... Oh, wait, I can't show the cover. I don't know that I want to pick up the next one. I don't know that I'm going to be interested in a year for another 25, 30 bucks to read part two. It's certainly a good effort. Um, if they if they made like four issues and put it out as a bigger read, I would definitely pick that up. I would definitely want to read it, but it's just such a tiny little book for a big price and not much story, but it's a good enough setup. So I'm kind of, you know, it's fine. I wasn't blown away. I wasn't disappointed. I just wasn't blown away. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to support another one just because there's just not much there and it just takes so long. But then again, I want to support independent creators. It's, it's, it's so hard to know. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. So, um, yeah, a fun book. Uh, just a little bit of kind of lack of clarity in a couple places in the storytelling with the visuals. I'm like, what's this? What's that? But, you know, the artwork was pretty good overall. The, the drawings were good. The coloring is good. The concept seems fun. So that's that. That's all I got. No more gods. Again, I'm, this is the back cover. I can't show you the front because it's naughty, naughty. But it's really well done. Anyway, that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time.